Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. Today, working on my lovely 2000 Ford Explorer, the Exploder, right here. I've had some ABS light on and kind of my brakes kind of acting finicky for quite a while now. I've already replaced the speed, speed sensor that's in the rear differential. Did not solve my issue. Ran the codes with my little uh, blue driver um, ODB2 or OBD2 port reader. And it gives me a C1155 left front wheel speed sensor input circuit failure code, as well as a P0500 vehicle speed sensor A circuit code. I've already went ahead and replaced my front passenger side uh, wheel hub, as you can see right here. It's pretty grimy as expected. And as you can see here, this is where the speed, the speed sensor actually uh, connects. Here is my replacement. I went with a Timken wheel, wheel hubs and I went ahead and replacing them as a pair. Even though it only calls out the left front, I figured I'd just go ahead and do both of them so I don't replace one. Maybe it works fine for a few months to a year and I have to replace the other one anyways. Here is the actual speed sensor cable right here. And as you can see, this is pretty, pretty nasty looking as well. Initially, I was under the impression that you had to replace the hub assembly for the all-wheel drive setup and that the cable was a, I guess, a sealed system. It turns out it does not look like it is, as I was able to remove it from the uh, wheel hub and it does uh, sit in place with a Allen key. So that, um, I guess, was just a misconception. I could have saved some money. Maybe you'd only need to replace the speed sensor. I went ahead and just do the hubs. The car does have 120 something thousand miles and I'm getting it prepped up for my daughter to drive. So I figured better safe than sorry. There is a test you can do to check your uh, wheel hub. And if you grab it at 12 o'clock and uh, six o'clock and kind of try to shake the wheel, if it you got some movement uh, you know, up and down, it could be your hub going bad. Mine didn't have any on either wheel and it didn't have any going side to side, which is I guess your tie rods. So just keep that in mind. It could just be the sensor, but you know, the car's got a lot of miles on it and I figured I just might as well replace the whole thing. As mentioned, I've already replaced the passenger side. Wasn't too bad. So we're gonna go ahead and do the driver's side. Figure out to go ahead and throw this into a video and uh, you know, show you guys the process in case you have the same uh, issue and you wanna do your own wheel hubs. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Wheel is off. Don't forget you have to remove your axle nut right here, or at least uh, loosen it down. It's a 32 millimeter. You want a deep socket, otherwise it won't fit over the end here. Once you loosen this up a little bit, you're gonna have to um, re remove the two bolts for, that hold your caliper uh, mechanism in here. And I'll try to show this to you. You can see one is right here, and then one is down there. Hopefully you can see that. They are 15 millimeter, I believe. And then once you have the caliper unbolted, you might not have to work it, but you should be able to slide it off the rotor and kind of set it up here on the upper control arm and not dangled by the brake wire. One thing to note, make sure you hit some of these bolts, including the axle nut with some penetrating oil, It'll make your job a little bit easier. Once I get this loosened up, I'm not gonna completely remove the axle nut yet, uh, but uh, I'm gonna loosen it up pretty good and I'm going to then remove the two 15 millimeter bolts holding the brake caliper bracket. Once I get the bracket bolts out here, not these ones, these are actually for the brake caliper itself. They're back down here as I showed you earlier. You lift this whole mechanism, should be able to slide it off the rotor and we're gonna set it up here. Brake caliper bracket with brake caliper is off. Swung it up here. I went ahead and took off the brake rotor, which just slides right off once the caliper bracket is removed. You have this uh, back plate for the rotor, just three bolts. I uh, believe they are, looks like uh, 5 sixteenths. And on top of that, you have a small bolt here that is uh, holds the speed sensor wire. Uh, to the knuckle here. That's the same exact size, 5 16th. You're gonna have to remove that. And then you have little clips here with the speed sensor wiring and it goes up around into right here. 
and it's just a little tab you have to push it in and pull it out let's see if i can do it one hand here there we go and then you're gonna have to yank all those uh clips out you can break them it's not a big deal because the uh, at least if you have a uh, wheel hub that has the clips on the wiring like mine does you can just break those off rip them off pliers or whatever and uh, so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, backing plate off i'm gonna pull these clips out and then we're going to get these three uh, 15 millimeter bolts that hold the wheel hub to the knuckle and then this should come out with maybe some some you know pressure just don't uh, you know damage it when you're removing it because there are a uh, gear type setup that you don't want the teeth to get chewed up and so we'll go ahead and I'll get this removed and then we will uh, take a look back at this as you can see the uh, wheel hub bolts have been removed right here right here and right uh, down here of course they come in from the back and you don't have a lot of space especially the top one here you have the boot so you have to be careful you don't damage that uh, I end up using a flex ratchet 15 millimeter uh, longer socket right here and I was able to get them removed without a ton of difficulty the penetrating fluid helps a lot and then once you have that you should be able to just remove the axle nut the rest of the way and then I'm gonna need two hands but it should just come straight out you might have to pry it a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and get this out and then we'll come back and take a look you're gonna have some spots you need to clean up a little bit and then we'll install the replacement wheel hub has been removed get a little darker out here so I added a little bit of light and you can see a lot of debris and stuff in here I'm gonna have to clean that up and uh, you know you want to make sure you look at this make sure there's no damage seems like it's fine just a lot of debris and rust you want to clean all that up before you install the new one and everything slid out pretty easy you just got to work it pull it straight out don't uh, damage any of these little teeth here uh, when you're removing it and when you're installing the new one so i'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and then we will circle back i will get the new wheel hub and we'll get that installed just want to go straight on with it make sure you line up these uh bolt holes so i'll get it on here i'll get the bolt in place and then uh yeah we should be on our way to wrapping this one up cleaned up this whole inner area here it had a bunch of this gunk and i don't know if that's some of the issues i was having uh but uh, yeah cleaned this up and i have the replacement uh wheel hub right here and what you want to do is uh, when you have it here you notice the uh wheel speed sensor goes in right here you want it to be off here to the upper left side for your driver's side so it can go up that little groove right here it's going to go in that area right here and so if you see this top bolt hole right here you want to line that up with the top one on the steering knuckle and you just want to slot this in make sure you line up i don't know if you can see it very well but the little uh grooves with the uh ridges right here and this feed it on there so make sure it is fully uh, coupled properly and not off otherwise you'll grind it up pretty bad so i'm gonna go ahead and probably use two hands to get this thing on so i don't mess it up and i can get it guided on and then i'm gonna get the bolts in place and then we'll uh, jump back here and get this uh hopefully wrapped up here pretty soon wheel hub assembly is in place i have the three 15 millimeter bolts in place and i didn't see the torque specs for these uh you might be able to find them uh, but they are the same size bolt as the caliper bracket bolt which are also 15 millimeter and those are uh, anywhere from i believe 85 to 97 foot pound or something around that range so i'm going to probably do 95 for those and 95 for these bolts so 95 foot pound i'm gonna go ahead and torque those up the axle nut itself is uh, i believe between 180 and 207 or something like that so i'm gonna do 200 on the actual nuts and i'm gonna or the actual nut i'm gonna get that installed get these torqued up get this torqued up and then we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, rotor shield here on place and then the rotor and then the caliper back into uh, position the axle nut is torqued to 200 foot pound the three 15 millimeter bolts for the wheel hub to the knuckle are torqued to 85 foot pound i have the uh, rotor backing plate in place for the three bolts wheel speed sensor wire 
is clipped into place here. There's clip here, clip here, clip on the top, and then it swings around and plugs in here. I hit it with some uh, electrical cleaner. And then over here, there's a single little bolt back here. I think it's a 516. It's the same as the ones for the backing plate. I have that uh, tightened down. Just make sure you don't do it too tight and pull it off. And then I believe the, the sensor wire kind of goes like this, clears the suspension. And uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and knock off any rust in on the inside here of the rotor. Clean that up, hit it with some brake cleaner, wipe it down real nice, get that uh, installed onto here. And then uh, we can go ahead and swing down the caliper bracket with the caliper on it, get that in place, bolt it in place with two 15 millimeter bolts. Also torqued 85 foot pound It's the two shorter bolts. There's three 15 millimeter bolts as well that we used for the wheel hub. So those are already in use of, to recognize if you get them mixed up, the two shorter ones are for your brake caliper bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this taken care of and we'll come back here once I have these pieces in place. Brake caliper bracket is back in place. Everything is torqued down, 85 foot pounds. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this lug nut back off and we're gonna get the wheel mounted up and get this thing dropped back down and see if uh, I can clear the codes and the ABS light comes back or not. I'll drive around the block and uh, you know we'll see. Hopefully everything's good to go. Wheel is back on and uh, just have the lug nuts, uh, you know, half tight. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it back on the ground, torque it. I believe the lug nuts on the Explorer. Second gen is 100 foot pound. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit these to 100 foot pound on both front wheels. And then I'm going to clear the codes and we'll take it for a test drive. Finished up. It's now kind of dark out. No big deal. Got the sweet ass red light district <laughs> lighting going on in here but i'm gonna go ahead and uh, reset the codes for the car chassis codes everything including engine engine light unrelated to this issue we'll see if it pops up back immediately or not hopefully it doesn't and then i'm going to spin it around the block for a few minutes and just see does the brakes uh, operate any differently or not so i'm gonna go ahead and get this reset and we're gonna keep on trucking as you can see here, I am scanning the uh, entire system, it's chassis, engine, everything. It does a full diagnostic with this tool, which is pretty cool. Uh, it catches the ABS and a number of other things. I don't believe it can actually, uh, you know, cycle the ABS or anything super advanced, like, a, you know, one of those expensive snap-on tools. But this can at least, hopefully, uh, you know, give me the codes. It might pop up again, and then I can clear them start the car up and maybe take it for a drive and see how it's going. Now, if you do the full diagnostics scan, it does take a few minutes, I think about five. So I'm gonna let this thing spin through and, uh, you know, hopefully we're good to go. So it's pulled up all the same codes. It's got the P1000, I think it's normal if you have a tune or anything like that. Uh, the C1155 analog brake ABS, left front wheel speed sensor. And it's still got the same, um, P0500, the vehicle speed sensor circuit. And then it's got another one like the rear sounder circuit failure, but I think I need to maybe clear all these. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear these. And we'll go through and clear all these different things, start it up and see if they uh, pop back up if I take it for a drive. Just spinning it around the block. The car is kind of loud, so it may be hard to hear. And I do have the windows down because no AC yet. No lights on the dash yet. I mean, brakes seem okay. Um, a little spongy initially, but they seem like they're pressurizing. Um, So, gonna keep driving a little bit, uh, you know, test out the brakes. I do have some rust on the rotors and the and uh, the brake system from the car sitting for so long. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of love and we'll see how it goes. So it looks like, uh, you know, I drove around. I didn't see any uh, issues with the brakes. They seem real good, actually, surprisingly, since uh, 
the car have sat for a long time. The brakes have kind of rusted up. Hopefully I broke off most of the rust. ABS seems like it's working. I hit the brakes pretty hard a number of times. It seemed like it was responding as it should. No ABS light has came on yet. I think we're good to go. Um, as you can see here, I actually have no dash lights for a change. I'm sure my check engine light will come back on because of my tune and my uh, EGR and my cats and whatnot. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. But uh, you know, right now it seems like the car's driving pretty good. And uh, I do still have issues with my, as you can see here, the parking sensors. I don't know why that I replaced, I think the sensors, all the sensors in the back and it's still giving me an error for parking sensors. So I'm not sure if there's some circuitry or a fuse. So I'm gonna have to dive into that further. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw my, I guess my little bit video on my, uh, my camera or my um, radio setup, pretty cheap setup. I have uh, the nice little, uh, you know, radio bezel here. I, I, I have a video on this, link should be up here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I even have integrated uh, reverse camera. It's not the clearest, you know, it's not uh, super, uh, you know, high end uh, 4K video, but I mean, not too many 2000 second gen explorers have a reverse camera. It is actually a relatively difficult install because of the lift gate hatch. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put some gas in this thing. I'm actually at Bucky's, uh, you know, everybody's favorite mega gas station with 2 million pumps. I'm gonna put some gas in here, fresh gas. Um, at you know a third of a tank as you can see here everything seems to be going good my custom cooling system is keeping the car nice and cool car sounds good i had a buddy patch up my exhaust i had a small exhaust leak um, you know near the front off of my header connection i do have the torque monster headers and the exhaust is like 10 years old had a little bit of rust a little bit of issues so he patched it up i'm gonna keep an eye on that and if you notice i have a hole here i'm gonna put a wide band aem in here um, carry over from the old days and then here I have a plug-in for Apple CarPlay Android Auto. It's not wireless, so it's a direct plug for that. But, uh, you know, I got the nice carbon fiber uh, little trim to get this thing spiced up. But I'm trying to get this car in the state so my 16-year-old can drive this safely. That's key. I want it to be a relatively safe car for her to drive. Just to and from school. No long trips or anything like that. So that's where we're at now. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up. You know, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully, if you have issues with your uh, speed sensors, ABS lights, uh, wheel hubs, or any of that fun stuff this video might be useful for you and uh, you know if it is uh, leave a comment like share the video uh, subscribe to the channel that's super helpful I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers before I hit uh, retirement age <laughs> and so I'm gonna keep on grinding and uh, yeah keep an eye out for more videos peace <laughs>